Good afternoon, everyone. It is certainly my pleasure to be here. And Tracy, thank you for the, uh, the very kind and, as promised, short introduction. Uh, so on behalf of the people of Baltimore, I want to offer uh, a, a sincere greetings. If this is your first time in Baltimore, I hope uh, that it will not be your last time in Baltimore. If you're here, if you've been here, you've known that we have whipped up the best weather we could for you. We've had <laughs> two miserable days of rain, and now the sun has come out just for you. So I hope you appreciate it and enjoy and will return. And I would really like to thank Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health and the Advisory Council on Child Trafficking and Goldman Sachs uh, for sponsoring this critical, groundbreaking symposium, symposium on child sex trafficking. I also want to thank President Obama for bringing together leading researchers, policymakers, and advocates to identify gaps in research, best practices, and evidence to improve the lives of sexually exploited children. Baltimore is a beautiful city, a vibrant city, and a complex city. Like any other large city in our country, we are not immune to the scourge of sexual violence, whether it's rapes by unknown assailants and, and sexual assaults and intimate partnerships to the growing black market of selling and trading young girls and women for sex. The challenges presented by sex crimes are very real. Traffickers recruit young girls and women from Baltimore and surrounding areas and trapping them in a life of sexual slavery through the use of violence, drugs, threats, and intimidation. The average age of entry into prostitution in Maryland is 12 years old. Just 12. These are children. One of the recent human trafficking cases in Baltimore City was linked to an adult nightclub, an adult club, sorry in downtown, girls were lured from a nearby mall, then forced to strip and have sex with the customers. Their IDs, their birth certificates, phones, and money were taken from them, leaving them isolated and vulnerable. Because most women engaged in prostitution in Baltimore entered into the commercial sex industry when they were children, often because they were already victims of abuse or runaways, it is so critical that we provide resources and treatment to these women to help break the cycle of sexual trafficking. The resources cannot be provided by government alone, and I think you all, uh, we all understand that. We need to develop strong partnerships with advocates, with experts who can leverage their knowledge and resources to serve anyone who is in need. And I want to acknowledge and thank some of those individuals and groups that are doing just that in our community. Turnaround Inc. Anti-Trafficking Project has assisted over 180 girls and women since it opened its doors just 18 months ago. The Maryland Human Trafficking Task Force has just recently lobbied successfully to pass state legislation that would allow the seizure of assets gained through the illegal trading of, um, and selling of girls and women. Baltimore Sexual Assault Response Team, or SART, has, be has begun uh, working on the issue by identifying and evaluating current police response to the crime of sex trafficking and collaborating with other local providers to address this issue. And the Baltimore Child Abuse Center, Aramata Freedom, um, Aramenta, excuse me, Freedom Initiative, and Safe House of Hope are all assisting victims of sex trafficking in our community, and I want to thank them for that. We must all work together to support victims of human trafficking and hold those who sell and trade human beings accountable. We're excited to be part of this dialogue today, part of this unique forum, taking place where we'll find ways not only to help those already lured or forced into this brutal life, but also to find innovative and new ways to break the cycle of sexual abuse and violence targeted at those who are the most vulnerable. I have a vision of growing Baltimore, and I know that a growing and thriving Baltimore does not include sexual violence or human trafficking. We need to ensure that our sisters, our daughters, our brothers, our sons, our cousins, our friends are protected from these criminal vultures who take advantage of some of our most vulnerable citizens. So I want to thank you, not just for coming to Baltimore, but for coming to Baltimore and Johns Hopkins School of Public Health to talk about something 
that is so important and so vital to the future of our country. It's my privilege to be a part of this dialogue, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Thank you.